We will take a look at the pinpointer, which is used to locate faults in all different kinds of scenarios, from utility conductors to irrigation systems to golf courses, even oil fields and etc. HJR Net invented the product over 45 years ago and it hasn't changed very much since. Whether the cable from the transformer serves one or more residences, pull all the meters affected by the fault. Disconnect the faulted cable from the transformer if the voltage on the cable is 80 volts or more. Disconnect the neutral at the transformer and house meter. Disconnect any temporary services from the house. The pinpointer comes with everything that you need to locate a fault. It includes the probes, the probe cables, the probe extensions, 12 volt DC power supply hookup, 120 volt AC power supply hookup, the transmitter, and the detector with a 9 volt battery. It does not include a rechargeable battery kit to power the transmitter, and it also does not include an A frame detector. Both of these options are available. The pinpointer originally came in a metal craftsman style toolbox. As of 2016, we upgraded this to a Pelican style box, which is not going to rust. An optional rechargeable battery kit can be built into your pinpointer. It is important to first connect the cables to the transmitter, then the battery. It is also important not to touch the red and black cable leads together as if you were jumping a car. There's also a 12 volt DC power option for the transmitter. This comes included. Hook it up in the same way as you would the rechargeable battery kit, making sure not to touch the black and red leads to each other. The most common way for utilities to power the transmitter is by using the 120 volt power option. This is easy to set up just connect the yellow cables to each other. Next, clip the white to the neutral and the black to the hot leg and you're good to go. Once the pinpointer has a power source, it should be calibrated to verify accuracy. To do this, turn on the switch to whatever power option you chose. Next, short the red and black alligator clips that are connected to the transmitter. You'll see all of the LED lights on the pinpointer start to flash with each pulse, and they indicate how bad the cable fault is. If only one LED is lit up, it's a little pinhole in the cable probably, and if all of the LEDs are lit up, the cable might be cut in half. To properly calibrate, adjust the sensitivity knob when the leads are clipped together so that all the lights flash during the pulse. Next, we're going to connect the black transmitter lead to the ground rod and the red transmitter lead to the faulted cable. Extend the ground rod out perpendicular to the lay of the faulted cable. And if you're not having success on one side of the faulted cable, try the other side of the faulted cable, as this will give you a different path to ground. Depending on what application you're using, the red transmitter lead could be hooked up to a sprinkler box, a customer's meter, or even the transformer. If you're using the probes, connect the probes to the probe extensions and then the probes to the probe wires. The other end of the probe wire should attach to the detector. The red goes to the red, the black goes to the black. Then hang the detector around your neck and you're ready to start locating faults. Make sure that the detector's battery is okay before heading out and actually locating a fault. To do this, hold the check battery button on the back of the detector and look for the needle on the front of the detector to reach the battery okay status. If the needle does not move when you hold the check battery button, this means you need to replace the battery. To do this, unscrew on the sides of the detector and then look to see where the battery should be replaced. Pull the balance knob to turn on the detector. 
Turn the sensitivity all the way down, then adjust the balance knob to move the needle to the center of the detector. Now we're ready to start locating faults. To begin, take the probes and put them in the ground. Look for the pulse on the detector and follow the direction of the pulse. Take readings about every 10 yards like a football chain fashion. Once you see the needle switch directions, go the opposite direction until you see the needle in the very center of the detector not moving. You've located the fault on one coordinate. Now you need to rotate 90 degrees and locate it on the other coordinate like an XY axis. This method of fault locating is extremely accurate and will take you within a square foot of the fault every time. As you progress further down the line and further away from the transmitter, you will need to adjust the sensitivity periodically in order to get the best readings. If you are having troubles locating the fault, the first recommendation would be to move the ground rod. Try to relocate it to the other side of the faulted cable, perpendicular to the lay of the cable. This will give you a different return path to ground. Make sure to extend the ground rod as far away from the transmitter as possible. As you move down the cable, the needle deflections may decrease. This is the silent detector feature, which prevents locating phantom faults caused by noise from adjacent lines. The needle's movement increases again near the area of the fault. If you were using the A-frame detector, the first step is to connect the detector to the A-frame by attaching two screws to the top of the detector. Then connect the black wire to the black jack and the red wire to the red jack. The rest of the instructions for the A-frame are the same as the instructions for using the probes. As with the probes, follow the direction of the needle and it will guide you to the fault. After you've cleared the fault, check the detector for more needle deflections, as there could be more than one fault on the same cable. In this demonstration, we are locating a faulted cable buried under grass, but the pinpointer can also be used over asphalt or concrete. You will need two sponges and a bucket of salt water. Soak the sponges in the salt water, then place the probes on top of the sponges. This will create a conductive path for the signal to travel through. 